Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophynet the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Thronebreaker The Witcher Tales. We're very close to Davor's Abyss, where we need to go to the summit meeting to Bruver Hoog. We've uh, convinced pretty much every clan along the way so far, and I think there's one more clan left if I look at the map and this lovely town. But before we head in, I want to check out what the feast in the previous episode actually did for Gabor since he got an upgrade. So Gabor was actually removed from the deck because of that. Uh, we just have enough to add him, so I don't know what changed. So damage unit by 15 now. If it was destroyed, deal any remaining damage to another unit. And we can play two trinkets from our deck instead of one, which is interesting. I still don't know how I got that trap the last time. Because it didn't seem like I have that in my deck. I don't think I even have that the pitfall trap. No, I don't. So I don't know. In the previous episode, I had... In the fight against that Shailmar, we had that uh, trap in there. But I don't even have that card. I think I'm going to actually get decoy in my deck as well if i can get decoy in my deck i can double play some of my uh, more powerful cards so which means we need to upgrade the royal treasury to increase the number of trinkets to four there we go and then we can go into the command tent and add the decoy and I think I'll swap out the Lyrian Merlot for Alzer Thunder as well, because I feel like the damage is going to help us a bit more than the boosting does. And that should be it. So, into this village. Seems to be pretty big. Okay. Curse a black broke veil's been undone! <laughs> and by a human wench! Okay, stop calling me a wench. We would take root neath Mount Carbon where it's warmer, but allotments for the veil. We would take root. Okay, that's that. And then this guy. Old dwarf's codex states it clear. If you're in a mine and something knocks, you'd do best not to knock back. Ever. Okay. okay, then. Old dwarf's codex. Okay, so that's just that. Let's talk to him. Riding past a mine, Meave noticed a group of miners gathered around the entrance to a shaft. Frost had settled on their moustaches and beards, suggesting they had been there for some time. The Queen summoned Gabor and asked him to determine the reason for this sitting. He returned after a few minutes and announced the most curious thing. They're waiting for the knocking to stop. Meave's okay. frown prompted Gabor to explain in greater detail. According to our laws, dwarves can't go into a mine if there's knocking coming from the inside. We're obliged to wait for the ruckus to quiet down. Ah, yes. Our own miners share this superstition, Reynard interjected. They say the knocking is that of a treasurer gnome, a kind of mine ghost. With all due respect, your miners are dimwits, Gabor said, patting Reynard on the shoulder. Knocking means an imminent and abrupt discharge of the potential pliable energy of rock formations. In other words, you can, a rock burst. Except usually it's all done in a day or two, whereas these lads have been waiting going on two weeks. Foreman's grown impatient. He'd like to send someone down the shaft, have them see what's at issue, but... Well, the code forbids us from doing anything of the sort. But we are not... Yeah, check to see what's happening in the mine. If in this manner I can gain favour among your brethren... Sighed the Queen, dismounting. So be it. I shall descend and see what the problem is. The shaft was too narrow to fit an entire army. So Meave and a small unit of men entered the mine, miners' lamps in hand and hearts in their mouths. This the rhythmic could knocking be a puzzle coming battle. from the bowels of the mountains, distorted and multiplied, was unnerving. Soon the company arrived at the place that seemed the source of the knocking. Gabor put his ear to the rock and listened for several moments in silence then struck the wall with all his might. The wall crumbled with a crash, opening a passage into another corridor, from which sprang numerous foes. N numerous foes? And it seems like it's human foes. What? Shortened battle in the bowels of the mountain, in the darkness of the abandoned mineshaft, it was impossible to discern who stood against Meave's force. It was clear only that they were men, or at least something taking their form, imitating their voices. 
Knowing her sword was too large to trust in this tight shaft, she threw it to the ground and reached for her dagger. Short in battle. And I feel like we are going to have limited... Oh, no. We don't. Okay, so Noli, the shadowy silhouette. What was that? If this unit... My senses are telling me. <laughs> Those definitely aren't ghosts. Okay. So... If this unit's power drops to four or less, shuffle it into your deck. So they don't seem to be normal enemies, which is weird. So let's use the drummer and time leave for like me. to get another one of the drummers since we're pretty much safe for now. Let's get this drummer out. So Mahakam ill. Drop your weapons. We're gonna do pretty Nay, much the same thing. It looks like they're normal Temerian soldiers or something Northern Realms like anyway. So let's pull another drummer and Left, one of right. the swordsmen. Left, okay, right. the, the cavalry. The cavalry. So we get the same benefits from the Mahakam Ale. Interesting. So these guys just keep going. Back Fair to enough. The dust you came. Just gonna start charging with these guys. Um, what do these guys do? Who's Spawn a base copy. Oh, apologies, Maeve. I thought you were raining. <laughs> okay, the voice lines in these in this battle is are actually really cool. Every turn on turn start set this power unit. Powers this unit's power to the adjacent unit with lowest power. If there are no adjacent units, destroy self. Okay, seems like it's time to actually start damaging. Yeah, start damaging some of these guys. Um, there we go. Then we can force a separate unit out if we want to. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for a walk more wagon. So let's put this guy over here. God save the queen! Then let's pull the war wagon out. Put that over here. Uh, like it's about over it's here. It's not too late to walk away. It's not too late to walk away. So let's end the turn. Raynard, are we winning? I can't see a bloody thing. <laughs> I can't see a bloody thing. Yes, indeed. We can't see a bloody thing. Um, I'm gonna go with the Lyrian Arbalest. And just put that Give me it. over here and hit the shadowy silhouette over there. Because this one is gonna, yeah, go for the highest unit. Tick, tick from left to right normally. So there we go. And that goes to four, both of them. They're getting boosted. That's not going to be interesting for us. Wait, let's use the regiment drummers first. And get another Arbalest. Abolition, that is man. eight damage. So there we go. I'm going to try and not kill any one of these. Then the other drummer, which pulls Xavier. As ordered. Hmm. Could use, of course, Xavier to pull more units. Um, but I think, let's do that, let's do that, let's just pull more units. Um, and another one, then Lyrian Sightman, and the Grey Rider, which gives us one more space, so I'm gonna have to use that space for, uh, something else so let's use the Lillian horn and that's gonna kill one of them sadly i'm not gonna use that no i'm not gonna use that just yet so let's end the turn so two armor which means that technically if i use me one more time i also trigger all my arbalests it didn't help me too much but a but, but, but. If I use the Lyrian Lance Connect, I actually get this and this. 
then the Wagenberg on this, and that removes that unit from the battlefield. And then the Rivian Sapper Stop your yapping. can go Start over ditch. here and kill almost every single one of them. Just to clean up shop a bit. There we go. And right over there. And pass. Stop! Stop, we surrender! Okay. Now mystery. Both sides were surprised. Who was that? Both fought in the weak light of torches nearly down on hands and knees. In the end, the queen emerged victorious, and as soon as she had returned her sword to its sheath, she asked the new prisoners a question that was on everyone's mind. Who the devils are you? The captives looked at each other in disbelief, as if before them stood a ghost. Finally, one of them managed to choke out a response. Your Highness, we're... We're your subjects. He <laughs> recognized the accent at once. The men came from Rivia. But what were they doing so far from home? According to the prisoner's account, after the Nilfgaardians' invasion of their kingdom, terrible poverty gripped the land. Seeking bread, some desperate inhabitants had gone to the mountains of Mahakam, engaging in wildcat mining in search of precious ores. Without asking the dwarves what they thought of this. You know yourself, my queen. Explained one captured Riv. They guard their treasure real jealous-like, don't care a whit about the suffering of others. They see us starving down in Valley and don't lift a stubby finger. Sadly, the Rivians had dug close to existing corridors. When Gabor destroyed the wall that stood between them and the dwarves, they were convinced they were being attacked by monsters, so they raised arms in self-defense. Meave! Tis a tough nut to again, said Gabor. But let's nae kid ourselves. These men are thieves, and we must hand them over to the Mahakaman Guard. So they may do what? Sentence them to hard labor, or hang them at once, said Reynard, his usual calm shaken and his voice raised. These are your subjects, Queen. They coveted their neighbor's goods, true, but only because they had knelt themselves. Indeed. And I feel... Let the Rivs leave or hand the Rivs over to the Dwarves. Leave? Why is that an option? I just, I want to have them in my army. I want these guys in my army. No, not... I don't want to hand them to the Dwarves either. Because I feel like Bruver is not going to like... Well, he's going to like that, but I don't want to. So, because uh, I want to I wanna do something for Reynard for once. Because I feel like we've uh, been letting him down... Time and time again, so let the rivers leave. The foreman wished for the knocking to stop, said the queen. And so it shall. As for you, go back to Rivia and tell all their queen shall soon return, leading an army. The grateful rivers quickly packed up their tools and left the mountains. Meave had no doubt Bruva Hoog would soon learn of the affair and would certainly not approve of her decision. Yet she preferred to face the elder's wrath than send her subjects to a dwarven prison or possibly to their death. I'm hoping we did more good than bad, so that I was allowed this one time that we uh, took our side and not the dwarf's side. Well, boys, we swig and we get back to work. So there we go, a bit of resource. I feel like this could have been more if we chose the side of the dwarves, but uh, never mind. let's get this notice board. And let's see how far we all off we are, because, yeah, looks like we're almost there. But there seems to be more. Oh, yeah, there's definitely more. So that's probably Mahakam itself. But we're heading towards Davor's pits. So that indeed looks like a pit. Uh, seems like there's one more puzzle battle before we're over there. So that's going to be perfect for this episode. So Davor's Abyss. Oh. The sound of approaching hoofbeats made Meave turn to see Reynard spurring on his panting horse, galloping at a breakneck speed towards her. Ill tidings I bring, Your Grace. Uh oh. Clearly. Glad tidings never arrive with such urgency. Our scouts captured a Nilfgaardian messenger. He was traveling in disguise and by night. When he realized his capture was imminent, he strove to destroy the letters he carried. We were able to salvage some in parts. Anything of interest? Yes, there is, I fear. Your Majesty, you must listen. Consider your offer accepted. Direct Meave and her force to the agreed site. We await their arrival. Your reward shall be as agreed. Hail Keritza. A traitor. 
We might have expected as much. Nilfgaard has shown amply that it abides only by the rules it sets. Since they have not proved able to defeat me in the field, in open battle, they seek other means. I suppose the scroll bears no name. It does not, Your Grace. Hmm. We have a mole. So have you interrogated the captain? The messenger. Have you questioned him? Naturally, Your Grace. Alas, he knows not to whom the letter is directed. He was to leave it in an agreed spot. I take it tidings of the whole affair have spread throughout the force? Yes, Your Majesty. The witnesses were too many to keep this fact a secret. We must thus assume the traitor in our ranks knows it as well, and will make no attempt to retrieve the scroll. A dead end. Hmm. Have we any other leads or clues? None I fear, Your Majesty. We must be alert. Keep a keen eye on events as they unfold, and exercise great caution in forging new acquaintances. Very well. Eyes wide open, all senses attuned. Yours in particular, Reynard. Of course, my liege. Now the only people actually guiding us are... Ooh, wow. We went from positive morale down to negative morale, and we have a shrine over there, so might as well make use of it. So yeah, the soldiers doesn't don't like that we have a mole, so let's just pray at that. Boost that up again. And then get these resources. And there seems to be a little shack over here. Your Majesty, something dwells in this house, a beast with burning red eyes and frightening growl. Perhaps it guards something worth finding, but only a few brave souls would be able to fit inside. Not all might return. So let's use egg. One man shall suffice. Egg of the Nell. Let him be the one to vanquish it. There we go. And we complete the Tainted Ale. A great. So let's actually take a look at that. Mark a unit and boost it by 10. After three turns on turn start, destroy that unit and self. Interesting. It's also some kind of trap. But, and it actually fits with the Tainted Ale team, but uh, I'm not going to use it for now. And then the report from the intercepted letter, consider your offer accepted, direct me even a force to the agreed site. Yeah, we heard about that, so it's literally what Rainer told us. So let's move on. So, the puzzle battle. Seems like there's something buried in the snow here. Let's check that out. And it is... A troll snowball fight. Lyrian winters are mild, frosts are rare, and snow, should any fall at all, melts the moment it lands. Yet Meath soldiers had now witnessed an expanse of the frosty powder blanket, the peaks of Mahakam. They delighted in the harsh beauty of the frigid landscape and were struck with an ingenious idea to pack snow into small orbs and hurl them at each other. Hilarity and hearty laughter ensued for minutes, that is, until the troll joined their revelry. To their terror, he had brought rocks to a snowball fight. Do not let Neve die. There we go, shortened battle and a lot of rocks. And that just happened, okay. So, Neve, no ability, and the rocks every turn on turn start throw a troll's snowball at the row with most humans. If it lands on a road, damage all units on it by two and force the three highest units to swap rows on their sides. Uh, and it's it's two damage, so I can take three hits. Move three cards to the other row on their sides. So if I go with the sideman, this harvest will be reaping black clad heads. Every turn on turn start, throw a troll snowball at the row with the most humans, okay? So let's put one over My here. So now he's gonna hit those over there. Then, how many rocks are there? There are six rocks. So if I just put one over here, I can actually survive another rock throw. There we go. Let's put one over here. Let's swap that around. So now if I use the stray slinger, I can actually get three of them over here. And then the turn. Then one over here. Should have listened to me old lady. That's gonna damage them. And I'm done for. Okay, let's retry that. This artist will be reaping black clad heads. 
So if I keep them on the, the same row, a time to sow. I'll actually swap that over. So now I got one turn that I don't have a rock thrown at me. So that's end of turn. Then another one. Ah, should have listened to me, old lady. Where I just get hit by these guys. And then I can deploy a slinger. The one, two, three. There we go. And the third. They swap rows as well. And then if I use the next one, I get one, two, three. And that just gets me hit over here again. And then... I can just pass, because if I use this one, I'm going to damage Meave, and I don't want to do that. So if I just pass, he needs to throw his... Oh! What? Oh. That's not good. So now we're at this point again. I feel like I should put a one over here. Thing about slings, they hide well. Put those two on the other yo. And this one on my row. So that when he kills them, I get this situation. And if I sling her again, I can get only one of them down here. And we get an equilibrium again. Then use the Sightman. To get next to the slingers, get a hit there, and then my final slinger, there we go, there we go. What do we need to do? Wait, what? What? That was perfect. One, two, three, we're not gonna get a rock this time. Which is fine, because I want to survive this next hit. Aye. There we go, and the turn. And now we use the last slinger. And that's gonna... Ah, oh, he doesn't trigger the final rock, for fuck's sake. No, we can use another Sightman on uh, Meave's row. Which allows us a big health target for our slingers in the next few turns. So there we go. Now we pull the slinger. Always damage the highest target over there. And then this one. And this one is going to die anyway. Although we need to keep our target. So if I do this. We get that. And then for our final rock, we get these three, and we finally beat it, and the troll is out of rocks. Jesus Christ, that was difficult. There were just too many options to go through. Well, that was the episode. Um, and we actually didn't even get... Oh, there's one cart of goodies over here, which does contain pretty much nothing. That was weird. We didn't get a single reward from that. Or maybe I missed it because I was putting my uh, head into my hands because that was that was really bad. I had to do a lots of tries to get through that, but we managed to pull it off. The the rock throwing troll is uh, down, so uh, and with that I'm gonna take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. And when we get back, we'll uh, go to Davor's Abyss for the summit meeting. So thank you guys enormously for watching, and hope to see you guys in the next episode of Thronebreaker: The Witcher Tales. Goodbye.